Alright, for what? For story. And it was horrible and embarrassing and traumatic. No, probably this is my, no, this is without a doubt my most fraught moment. Um, which kind of set the tone for the rest of my life. Um, there was the time that I was cutting photo frames on my best friend's family kitchen table. It was a brand new giant wooden table. Got my craft knife and carved a massive perfect star into the surface of their new table. Once upon a time when we were uh, still, the house was still being built, but, um, the kitchen wasn't quite in, in its uh, normal state, so um, there wasn't a lot of room to move out there at that time. And uh, when a friend arrived one afternoon, we were chatting away in the kitchen and since we didn't have things organised properly, he just put his hat on the end of the table, which was fine. And while I made tea, you know, we were chatting away. <laughs> and uh, somehow or other, I wasn't paying attention to the teapot, but chatting to our friend in the kitchen. And uh, suddenly I realised <laughs> when I was pouring the tea, I was pouring it into his hat. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed about that. That was the time that they shot a porno film in my room. This morning, in fact. And by the way, my name's Spencer Gigach, and this is my dog, well, my family's dog, Jumbo. Right here. And um, I'm just gonna be telling some story. Okay, when I was I, no. Yeah, when I was a boy who was six years old, I was at school with my teacher and I asked um, the teacher to unwrap a muesli bar and I, was, and I said, hey dad, can you open my muesli bar? Um, and I was very embarrassed by... Um, calling my teacher a dad, but anyway, she was also a woman. <laughs> um, there was the time I went to a rave with my boyfriend and he put five pills up his butt to try and get past the security on the entrance. And then when we got inside, he couldn't find the pills. And we spent the whole night freaking out that he was going to overdose on ecstasy after his anus and then on the walk home found them in the grass. Um, I went along to my daughter Natasha's wedding, which happened to be in Mansfield. And uh, when I got to the church, this strange woman came out and said, G'day, Phil. And I had no earthly idea who this wretched woman was. And I said, oh, you know, it's a nice day or something. And uh, she sort of kept saying, oh, well, this is going to be a lovely wedding, isn't it? And uh, I'm so happy to be here, and I guess you are too, and all this sort of thing. And I'm scratching my brain. I cannot think for the life of me who this dreadful woman is. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sort of thinking it's about time to go into the church. I've been chatting with this anonymous woman for you know, too long already, and it's embarrassing because I don't know who the hell she is, she knows me, I don't know her. And uh, then suddenly, she just sort of put on a sort of a half smile or something, and it, it, it was the, it was the way she did it. And suddenly I thought, oh my God, that's my ex-wife. And I mean, how embarrassing, I mean, I'd, I'd shared a bed with this woman for 12 years and I couldn't for the life of me remember who the hell this was. So that's my embarrassing moment. Oops. Um, there was the time that I went on a family v vacation and we came home and found my dad's secretary sitting at the kitchen table in her dressing gown. So she came back to my house in a, in a cab and we came back inside and we're having a bit of a roll around on the bed. 
uh, on this bed. Uh, and anyway, so I have a bit of a, a, a passion roll around the bed, and then there's this big clunk noise. And uh, I go, oh, what was that? And she goes, oh, that was, that was my leg. Yeah, this was the very fraught moment of not knowing what to do when someone's leg's just fallen off during foreplay. So there was, uh, <laughs> their leg fell off and was on the ground and I was looking at the leg and looking at her and looking at the leg. And so uh, in my moments of, of not knowing what to say, I, I, my pathetic offering to the situation was, uh, was it a shark? Was it a shark? And <laughs> she said, um, she said she'd rather not talk about it, which was fair enough. So it's not a problem. No, you know things continued for a little while. You know, I'll just say that there wasn't. A, you know, we didn't go all the way. <laughs> oh, this is not fun to talk about. Anyway, did she? Yeah, but things. And then you start second guessing yourself because you. I just said feet, you know, I mean, not that she's only got one, but you know, like you don't, it's probably not a big deal, but yeah, you know, internally you're thinking, I've got to avoid saying the word foot or leg, you know, of course, and there's all the shit puns running through your head about getting your leg over and, you know, you know, I would have had sex with it, but I had cold feet, ugh, ugh, it's not good, very fraught, not so fun, but, yeah, was it a shark? Good line, that's good. Yep, okay, wait, wait, do you know what it's called when somebody rubs their penis on you? Bye.